Hello to all my viewers, this is Magical Amazing, and today's video is going to be on how I made my M4A1. This is not the one that can field strip, I apologize, but that video ended up being way too complicated and hard to follow. So I made a more simplified one, which is the one that you're going to be seeing right now. First step as usual is going to be to sketch a full size picture of the gun onto a piece of paper. In this case, the entire gun can't fit on a single piece of paper, so I just did the upper and lower receivers. Once I have the full scale picture, I'm going to use it to cut out two panels, which will become the main parts of the lower receiver. Next, I cut out a strip, which is going to be used to connect the two panels of the lower receiver together. And here's what it looks like once the two are together. I've left the bottom part of the magazine well open and the top, though that's just there because it's a waste of cardboard to cover it. Next I'm going to work on the trigger guard and its little housing there by cutting out four pieces that look like this. After using thin strips of cardboard to cover over the parts that are going to be open, they look like this. I'm just going to be attaching them to the lower receiver here. Next I'm going to use a piece of cardboard just to cover the space between the two pieces I just made. This is going to end up making the lower part of the trigger guard. Here's what it looks like once it's glued in place. Next I'm going to take a piece of cardboard, it's the same width as the lower receiver, and remove uh, part of it from the corrugation. I removed that part from the corrugation so that I could make this tube more smooth and easier to bend. It's just going to end up getting glued to the top of the lower receiver. Here I've put a tube of paper inside of that roll that I just made. This is going to make it look a little bit nicer because the inside of that tube is what you're going to see when you pull back the bolt. All I'm doing here is rolling it up and then I'm going to put it inside the cardboard tube I made before. Then I'm going to unroll it once it's in there and make sure that it's as tight to the inside of that tube as possible. After removing the excess paper from the ends of the tube, I sketched out the position of the ejection port. Here's what it looks like once the ejection port is cut out. After gluing that tube onto the lower receiver, I'm going to cut out two strips like this, which I'm going to glue to the top. This is going to make out the channel for the charging handle to sit. Once attached, here's what they look like. Notice that the distance between them is significantly narrower than the width of the lower receiver. Next I'm going to take my knife and cut out in between those two pieces I just attached. Notice that when I do this though, I'm not going to cut all the way from one end to the other. I'm only going to cut out the center part like that. Next I'm going to start work on the bolt and it's just another tube like this which is going to fit nicely inside of the one we've already made. It's just long enough to cover the ejection port and you make sure that you can pull it far enough back to clear the ejection port without sticking out the back of the receiver. Next I'm going to cut a hole in the bolt. This is going to be for the little indent which has the holes that vent the gas from the system. Here I've just taken a thin piece of cardboard and covered up that hole that I just made. After trimming that piece of cardboard I just poked three holes in it with a sharp object. And here's what the bolt looks like when it's inside. Next I'm going to start on the charging handle and I'm going to cut out a T shape that looks like this. It's going to be just long enough to fit about that far down the slot. At this point I'd forgotten to cut out the two pieces in the back there to allow the charging handle to come forward all the way, so I do it now. Next, to make it a little stronger, I'm going to double up that T-shape. Next, I'm just going to add a little detail to the charging handle and thicken up the back part of it a little bit, and I'm going to attach this piece to the back. To attach the charging handle to the bolt, I'm going to make a tiny little spacer piece that looks like this, which is going to be just tall enough to stick up into the slot from the bolt. I'm then going to glue the charging handle onto that piece and then that piece onto the bolt. Now this piece attached to the charging handle, that spacer, is going to be what the rubber band pulls on. 
So it's going to be looped like that and then held forward with a paper pin. So when you pull back the bolt, the rubber band will return it to its original position. Here you can see where I've attached the charging handle and that spacer onto the bolt. So when I pull back the charging handle, I'm also pulling back the bolt. Next I'm going to go ahead and cover up the top part of that slot with a piece of cardboard. Pretty simple. You just got to make sure that it's going to be wide enough to not interfere with pulling back the charging handle and making sure that the charging handle doesn't bind up inside of there. Here you can see where I've used the paper pin to hold the rubber band from the front and this is how it all looks together. Now I'm testing to make sure the action works and doesn't get hung up and nothing's too tight. Next I'm going to cut out this piece here and this is just going to be a little bit more detail over the ejection port. It's going to slope the uh, receiver a little bit toward the top bit there. Once that piece is attached, it's time to begin the dust cover. And that's just going to be pretty simply a piece of cardboard like this, which is going to fit in front of the ejection port. To make the dust cover look a little bit better, I'm just going to cut out a couple pieces that look like this and attach them onto either side. Once they're all attached, this is what the final one looked like from both sides. And this is the way that it's going to be attached and which side's going to be on the inside when it's closed. To make the dust cover pivot, I'm going to make a hinge. Would you look at that? That's going to be a central pin with two sleeves on either side, which are going to be this long. The dust cover is going to be attached to those sleeves. Next, I'm going to take a strip of cardboard like the one in the middle and make these two little cylinders on either side. These are just large enough to slip over the middle pin of the dust cover hinge, and these are going to be attached only to the receiver. Here you can see how I've put it together. I've attached those cardboard bits on either end of the hinge there to the receiver, and I've attached the dust cover to the sleeves over the middle pin. This allows for it to stay up like that, which is just friction, and it'll flip down, which gives you a nice view into the bolt. A little bit of extra detail to the rear of the receiver there. I'm going to cut out a piece that looks like this, which is going to go underneath the charging handle there and bend around the sides like this. Then here's what it looked like once it's glued on. Pretty simple. Next I'm going to cut out two shapes like this, which are going to be used to thicken the lower receiver around the magwell. Here's what they look like attached. Next I'm going to use my picture to cut out some more details on the lower receiver and paste them like it is here. On the other side of the gun, I'm going to cut out a couple pieces that look like this and glue them on in this position. The bolt release consists of a cardboard shape like this and two tiny paper cylinders, which will be glued together. Here's what they all look like together. Then I'm just going to paste that on in this position. These are the shapes I'm going to cut out for the fire selector and the two pins on the side of the receiver. And here you can see where I've glued them on. I also glued on that panel there, which is for the markings on the magwell. The shell deflector started off life as this shape here. I bent it at that thin point in the middle and it's going to be attached right there behind the ejection port. I used a couple flat pieces of cardboard to cover the edges like this and I did some trimming to make sure that they would fit on the lower receiver nicely. Here's what it looks like when it's attached and glued on. The forward assist housing started off as a piece of cardboard like this which will become a simple cylinder. I then took my knife and cut right across at an angle like that. The actual plunger for the non-working forward assist is going to consist of a paper tube and a cardboard circle. Once they're trimmed to fit and attached together, here's what they looked like. I then simply glued it onto the lower receiver right here. With the right side of the receiver finished, here's what it looked like. 
The last little bit of decoration on the receiver is going to be a piece that looks like this, which is just going to attach to the left side of the receiver here. The top rail is just three pieces of cardboard that are glued together in a T-shape like this. The stock began its life as a cylinder, as with a lot of the pieces of this gun, and here's what it looks like. Next I'm going to cut out a cardboard strip like this and wrap it around the edge of the tube a few times. Next I'm going to cut out three pieces that look like this, which I'm going to attach to the bottom of the tube. They go together in this shape, and this is going to be what you see when you extend the stock. Here's how I attached it. Next I'm going to take a big piece of cardboard, again that I've removed part of it from the corrugation, and I'm going to wrap it around that piece that I just made, and this is going to be the extendable part of the stock. Once that piece is glued together and its shape is held, I'm going to cut out a oval like this, which will be the end of the stock, the part that goes against your shoulder. I'm just going to glue onto that piece I made like this. After a lot of trimming and messing around, I came up with a piece that looks like this, which I'm going to attach to the uh, panel that I just cut out. This will take a lot of trial and error, so just be aware, you guys, but here's how it should look. Next I'm going to cut out a piece that looks like this, which is going to be glued to the stock right above that piece I just attached. It's going to cover the hole and make it look a little nicer. Then I'm going to cut a piece that looks like this, which is going to fit onto the stock here. A couple pieces that look like this are going to get cut out, and that strip is going to attach those two pieces on the bottom together. Here's what they look like when they're attached together. This piece is going to be glued onto the stock right here. The mechanism to lock the stock open and close is pretty much just a straight paper pin. What I've done is I've drilled a hole when the stock is completely closed, a hole just big enough for that pin to go through. Here you can see it in the inside part. Once the pin is in, you can't pull or push the stock. Next I opened it to the distance I want it extendable, and just drilled a hole again right through. So here's what the inside tube looks like with its two holes drilled in it. With the stock finished, all I did was glued it on to the rear of the gun. It's important when you do this step to check on it from all angles while the glue is still hot. Uh, because it's very obvious if it's off even just a little bit. Now I'm going to begin work on the barrel by cutting out two pieces that look like this. I'm then going to bend that top one around the bottom one to this shape. Here's a bit of a size comparison. The barrel consists of a piece of paper just rolled up like this, but there is more detail towards the muzzle. I'm going to take that piece, put three layers in it, and then have a fourth one stick out thinner than the first one. Once this is done, I'm going to add a few more layers to the front to give it this shape. The flash suppressor is going to be made out of these five pieces. Here is how I put it together. Next I'm going to take a piece of cardboard in a cylinder shape like this, which is going to be just the right size to fit into this piece. Then I'm going to take a strip of cardboard and wrap it around and around and around and make it bigger. Next I'm going to take a big piece of cardboard like this, which I'm going to wrap around the piece I just made. Here's what I mean by that. I then cut a hole in the bottom of that piece like this, which is just big enough to stick the barrel through.
Next came cutting out a circle like this with another barrel sized hole in it and this is going to go on the front of that piece I made before. This is going to close off the front part of the barrel shroud and keep the barrel in place. Once I've attached I think you can figure out what those were for. Next came four strips like this, which is just going to be a little bit more detail on the barrel shroud. Here's how they are put on. Now I'm going to make how I'm going to attach that barrel assembly onto the gun by making a couple pieces like this. Here's how I'm going to wrap the thinner one around the thicker one like this. This is going to be what's going to be attached into the receiver of the gun. Here you can see where it is. It's more or less just a spacer between the barrel and the receiver, but here's how it, it is glued on. This is what it looks like after I've attached the barrel assembly to the receiver. Again, make sure that you check on this from all angles to make sure that's perfectly straight. The front sight consists of three pieces like this, the two main side panels of the sight, and the strip that's going to connect them. After attaching the two pieces together, here's what the sight looks like. So you can use it, I cut a notch at the top part of the sight, which is where the blade would go. Then I glued this little piece onto the inside for aesthetic purposes. Here I've just taken two strips of cardboard, and I'm going to wrap them around the barrel the distance of the sight apart. Here's what I mean by that. These two strips are glued to the barrel and they are going to be what attaches to the sight. Here I've glued the sight to those two straps. The magazine was next, which just consisted of two pieces of cardboard in the general shape of it. Ever heard of the Jastro illusion, where you have two geometric shapes such as these two side panels, but the one on the left looks bigger? In reality, they're exactly the same size. Now I've sketched where the indents on the side of the magazine will go, and I've cut along them. All I've done here is laid that cardboard onto another bigger strip and glued the pieces on. I then just lift away the pieces where I want there to be indents. After doing that for both sides and cutting away the excess, I use a strip of cardboard to connect them together. The trigger is just the shape of the trigger on a piece of cardboard layered a couple times for some thickness. Here's what it looks like once it's attached. The rear sight is going to consist of a couple pieces that look like this. Uh, I just freehanded these using my picture as reference for size. I'm also going to take a strip of cardboard like this, the same width as the rail, to glue them together. Here's what the rear sight looks like with the bottom attached with the strip. Here's where it's going to be connected into the sight. I just kind of put it into a couple slots that I cut out of the sides. A couple panels like this are going to make up the rear part of the sight. And here I've glued them together using a thin strip of cardboard. I'm going to raise the bottom part of that so it's going to be in line with the top of the carrying handle there. And this is what it's going to look like with the corrugation covered. The actual rear sight aperture is just a small piece of cardboard with a hole punched out of the middle of it. And here's where it's going to be connected to that rear piece. For the windage adjustment knob, I'm just going to take a circle of cardboard and a strip to wrap around it. Here's what the knob ended up looking like. And here's how I connected it. The parts that are going to connect to the rail look like this, just a couple bent pieces of cardboard in the shape of an L. After gluing those pieces on and the rear part of the sight, here's the entire carrying handle assembly. Last little bit of detail are going to be the two pins that attach the sight to the rail, and they're going to be made out of a couple pieces that look like this. Here's how they ended up looking. And attached to the rear sight carrying handle, here's where they are. And when attached, here's what it looks like from the left, and here's what it looks like from the right. And with that finished, you're done with your M4A1. So, thank you all for watching. I hope this helped you guys out. This is Magical Amazing, signing off till next time. See y'all later.